compassion. Now right to achieve happy life. Right to overcome suffering. Good morning. So firstly, I want to express my appreciation to the organizer, uh, they headed by Tomdor Rinpoche. So I much, very much appreciate. At the beginning, I usually reasons the relevance of religion in modern time. I believe, and also uh, many, uh, my friend, is agree, there should be a secular way to bring peace of mind. That. I will touch at public talk. Now, uh, respected mayors and uh, brothers and sisters, I am extremely happy to come to uh, Milano once more. And meeting with a long time, uh, some of the long time friends, and of course, many new friends. I think here one Muslim seems. <laughs> so I am very happy. And indeed, I very much appreciate the mayor's sort of welcome speech and you touched the importance of human value. I very much appreciate. My main concern is two things. Number one, promotion of human value. Number two, promotion of religious harmony. So in these two fields, I feel uh, public eventually can do in order to promote human value in human society. The beginning must start from individual. So firstly, uh, in order to get more comfortable, my eye I put this hat, so I need some permission from you. <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> so, 
Uh, Nonviolence uh, is not just a mere absence of violence, but nonviolence is uh, that uh, there is sort of also this situation, the violence you know, ready to say happen, but then intentionally or deliberately is in commitment of violence. So, uh, how to develop the restraint? You need determination, willpower. That willpower come through I think two factors. One factor, warm-heartedness, compassion. That's inner peace. One factor, holistic view. The compassion brings some kind of sort of sense of respect to other. So violence harms other. Therefore, one aspect is warm-heartedness. Another holistic, even you involve violence, what use? It really solves your problem through violence. That's the thing. For narrow-mindedness, for narrow-minded, short-sighted and particularly human mind uh, dominated by emotions or human intelligence dominated by uh, destructive emotions and emotion become out of control then you can't see the reality simply you see, you want to kill. You want to do something. So that's actually mad mind. Through that way, you can't see the reality. So all your method become unrealistic. So unrealistic method bring disaster. Not only fail what you want, but also create a lot of other unexpected sort of consequences. So therefore, uh, in order to sort of carry non-violent method, you need two things. Strong will, determination, based on compassion, warm-heartedness, and also the awareness of the fuller picture, then uh, you determine violence is uh, unrealistic method. And particularly now these days, in ancient time, people more or less remain as a day uh, isolated and more or less sort of independent. Now today's world. Is everything interdependent? For example, the global economy, everything now interdependent. An environment issue, everything interdependent. And one family is a life related with the whole society. This society's future very much related with other society. This nation's future related with the other nation. This continent's sort of future depends on other continent. That's the reality. So under that circumstances, violence is foolish way, unrealistic way. So understand that, then you develop uh, sort of what's the determination, 
no matter what sort of difficulties, I have to solve this problem through non-violent way. In order to achieve peace, long-lasting peace, that peace not through weapon, but through inner peace. So the sensible way to achieve peace is through inner peace. Usually disturbances in our mind mainly come from certain emotions, not external matters. For example, you surrounded by many hostile sort of things, hostility. But, your, but if your mind still calm, then the external, even so-called enemy, cannot destroy your inner peace. So inner peace destroyed by our inner negative force. That is anger, hatred, fear, these things. So therefore, in order to achieve uh, world peace, firstly, we need inner disarmament. That means deliberately reduce anger, hatred, these things. And compassion bring us self-confidence, inner strength. So therefore, uh, through one way, try to increase our compassion. Another, deliberately, with sort of fuller knowledge or awareness, destructiveness of these negative emotions, then deliberately try to reduce. So that I, that some kind of inner disarmament. Then through inner disarmament, and eventually we must achieve external disarmament. Already, the real threat of nuclear holocaust from Eastern Bloc, Western Bloc, that kind of thing, now already gone. With disappearance, disappearance of Berlin Wall, now that real threat now also gone. It's a very, very good thing. Uh, and also, the talks, the limitation of nuclear weapons. Wonderful. This is our first step. Uh, then, uh, step by step, uh, we have to uh, think to complete ban of nuclear weapon, complete elimination of nuclear weapon, then biological weapons, then offensive weapons. And eventually, our world should be demilitarized world. That's the external disarmament. Uh, such things as the people may feel these are just like dream or unrealistic. But I think, I believe, uh, if we, uh, what's it, uh, look our world more pessimistic way and doing nothing is our failure. Better to have some optimistic way, a certain some kind of visions. Then, of course, dream utilized world, my generation, my life will not see. But doesn't matter. Have some kind of vision. Then make effort and educate 
our younger generation, give them hope, give them sort of certain visions. That's my feeling. So one my uh, friend, once he suggested to give me a suggestion uh, to achieve what is it, no longer war, one way, as I mentioned earlier, dimly rise. Another is unified force, like German Franco unified force. These are now today actually there. So that unified force is the best guarantee, no longer danger of conflict between these two nations. So we already have European Union. You Italy, also one important member of the European Union. So uh, eventually, whole sort of member state of European Union try to create not only just economy zone, but also they try to create a unified force. Then that's the best guarantee. No longer any danger of military conflict between member states. Then there's the first regional basis. Uh, Arab, Africa, uh, Latin America, and Asia. I often you see expressing one day Indo China or Sino Indian unified force once materialized. That that's the really uh, best guarantee of no danger of conflict on that huge continent. As I really feel. So that also one sort of method to unified force, we should make this century a century of dialogue, a century of peace. Any problem, any conflict must solve through dialogue. That means through nonviolence. So our past century, 20th century, in reality, that century become century of bloodshed. Therefore, now this century, 21st century, although the beginning of the century, not a very healthy one, but we have to make every effort, including our prayer, this century should be century of dialogue. Oh. Now, <clears throat> now, I think here I want to deal with the religious harmony. Now, today, uh, we also receive seeing uh, conflict, some cases involved religious faith. Look, Northern Ireland. Now, fortunately, things improving. But some time back, fighting. Although political issue, but eventually, name of religion involved, protested, protestant, Catholic, fighting. So, very unfortunate. Now today, I really happy one Muslim uh, spiritual brother here. Uh, now I'm a Muslim, Shia and Sunni, sometimes. They say, fighting or killing. Very unfortunate. So in Sri Lanka, although again political, but then some cases,
some people get the impression conflict between Hindu and Buddhist. These are really terrible. We really need special effort from time to time to promote religious harmony. It's very essential. Now, since September 11th event happened, I'm a Buddhist. I'm outsider of Islam. But now I voluntarily making sort of effort, making act as a defender of great Islam. So it is really uh, many my Muslim brothers, uh, very few sisters. <laughs> so, uh, many Buddhist, many Muslim brother, you see, uh, explain to me if anyone who create bloodshed is essentially not Islam, not Muslim. And furthermore, you see, there are reasons they say are true Muslim, true follower of Islam, if uh, you should love towards entire creature as much as your love to Allah. Wonderful. All creature created by Allah. So if you really respect Allah, you must respect entire creature. You must love entire creature. So if you truly you see believe these things, if you truly implement, then wonderful. We really need constant effort to promote understanding among different traditions. Few months ago, I was in Lisbon. One interfaith service took in a mosque. It's the first time interfaith meeting in a mosque. The certain atmosphere, very wonderful atmosphere, and after interfaith meeting, we went to the main or city hall and meditation or silence meditation. Oh, wonderful. So uh, I always uh, making effort to promote uh, religious harmony. In spite of different philosophy, some say there is God, some say no God. Big difference. Oh, it doesn't matter. Important is, what is the message of God? What is the real sort of purpose of the theory of law of causality? Same. You should be a compassionate person. You don't practice killing, stealing, sex abuse, not telling lie. These things. Same. Use different method, but same purpose. So we must look the sort of result, not the causes. If you, uh, when you go to a restaurant, and, and then the sensible thing is, enjoy it. All the different foods, enjoy it. That's the sensible thing. Rather, argument, this food's material come from that, this is something that, this is something, uh, this come from that, this come from that. Uh, this is senseless. Better to eat, better to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so, like those the different religions, or oh, different philosophy, instead of argue, Oh, your philosophy is wrong, your philosophy is right. 
Instead of that, well, simply, uh, be a compassionate, sensible person. That's the purpose of these religions. So there are common ground, common purpose, and different method really necessary according different mental disposition. So that's realistic. That's reality. So we have to adopt realistic approach or realistic view. So now I will touch a little bit about the inner peace. Now inner peace, as I mentioned earlier, they very much related with compassion. Now here, all major religious tradition is it carry the same message, message of love, compassion, forg forgiveness, these things. To those people uh, who are, as uh, they, who have religions and are serious and are sincere, then certainly one's own religion have, as uh, they, a great potential to further increase our compassion or warm-heartedness. Now to those non-believers who have no particular religious interest or even some hate religion, then uh, Sometimes, you see, the people who have no interest about religion, then they also, you see, no interest about compassion, because they consider practice of compassion, uh, these things are religious matter. So that's absolutely wrong. Whether you uh, look religion or positive or negative, that's up to so every individual, if you have no interest, doesn't matter, okay. But there's no point to neglect about compassion. Why? We are, firstly, we come from our mother. Like human beings, other mammals, birds, who come from their mother and who survive entirely depend on others' care, then by biological factor, there's certain emotion which bring together. That's an affection. That's a necessary. So these are biological factor. So my own case, my mother, very, very kind. So today, I have some amount of compassion. The seed, first seed, you see that, come from my mother, not from Buddhist teaching. And eventually, afterward, then I study Buddhism and practice Buddhism, so certainly, further sort of so they increased. But first seed come from my mother. So if uh, I haven't sort of have that kind of kind of mother or as if my parent abuse me or sort of harms on me, then today I may find it difficult to practice compassion. So therefore, uh, seed of compassion is a biological factor because it need for survival. Very simple reason. And also proper growing, proper growth, right? proper growth. Again, affection is very essential. According scientists, according some scientists, you see, they experiment 
on monkey, monkey baby. Some monkey baby separated from their mother, some remained together. So then they found those young monkey with mother, always playful, and very few occasion of fighting, quarrel. Those monkey who separate from their mother, always unhappy, tense, and often fighting. So therefore, uh, therefore, the not only survival but also is it growth very much related with others' care, others' affection. So now medical scientists, now these are our common sense or common experience. Now according to modern science, now medical scientists, they found more practice of compassion result less stress, anxiety, more calm, result better blood circulation and less blood pressure and they actually more compassionate person their immune system some cases even increasing constant anger hated actually eating our immune system So, compassion and spirit of forgiveness, these very helpful for our health. So, through that way, our longevity, where longevity also more calm mind, more compassionate mind, they are lifelong, life longer. So these are the material which we can teach people from kindergarten. Of course, we everybody, everywhere, we see teaching health care, these things. So this should be included. So, so the proper promotion of human value, compassion, not through religious sort of teaching, but through education, is I think very important. So modern education, up to now, not sufficient to pay attention about the importance of warm-heartedness. So in modern education system, I think we are lacking special sort of pay attention about uh, importance of warm-heartedness. So we, uh, some my friend, even some NGOs, some universities, is he carrying some or the research work, how to introduce in modern education curriculum uh, the, or the so systematic sort of uh, information about the importance of uh, warm-heartedness. So that I think very, very important. So that I call uh, uh, secular way to promote secular ethics. So here I want to mention secular does not mean against religion. Some my friend is to consider the word secular means some kind of rejection or disrespect about religion. That's not the case. When I say secular means according India. India's constitution itself based on secular, secularism. And Mahatma Gandhi, he very much believed secular, secularism. But he carried prayers from all traditions, 
in daily some chanting some prayer so he is very much religious minded so this secular who believes secularism does not mean against religion certainly not so secular means no preference one particular religion respect all religions and including non believer so therefore uh, <clears throat> so therefore i think the secular sort of ethics should be there so secular ethics true secular way to promote mainly through education on the basis of common sense common experience and latest scientific findings